Welcome to the Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. I'm so happy you found us. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio, KMAS, weekdays from 6 to 9. Good Wednesday morning to you. It's the uh, seventh day of October. And Spencer, good morning, man. How you doing? Hey, I'm all right. How are you doing? Doing well today as we move through the week and some great conversations. Port a call today. So Dick Taylor and Wendy Smith update us on what's going on there. Budget talks and the uh, conclusion of all that work on the runway. Also from Peninsula Credit Union, Jim Morrell, the CEO there, and Chris Kirkley, the vice president of lending, will be on to talk about a big grant Peninsula received for affordable housing in our area. But uh, looks like the... Weather is getting ready to start changing by the weekend. Is that right? Yeah, we should be getting some showers as uh, early as tomorrow, maybe tonight, and it's going to last. Uh, probably not tonight, but uh, well, actually, you know what? Let me update this because now they're pushing it out. First Thursday was <laughs> supposed to have rain, and now it looks like it isn't. So maybe uh, it's not going to be quite as wet, but we are going to get probably at least an inch somewhere between an inch and two inches between tomorrow and Sunday. Mason County Public Health notified of four additional Mason County residents testing positive for COVID-19. Following further investigations on the cases they reported on yesterday, they did find a duplicate case. So the total now is 480 since March. There have now been eight confirmed deaths. Total tests performed 11,434. And now only one Mason County resident is hospitalized outside Mason County. No new confirmed cases were related to the outbreak at that long-term care facility since the last report and information release from Mason County Public Health. More information available on the county's website, and please do what you can to help reduce the risk and spread of COVID-19. Governor Inslee yesterday didn't move any counties forward or backward in his four-phase COVID-19 reopening plan, but he did say more activities would be allowed throughout the state. At a news conference, the Democratic governor said restaurants in second or third phase counties can now serve alcohol up to 11 p.m. and increase their table size from five to six in the second phase and to eight in the third phase. Also, for second phase counties, movie theaters will be able to operate at 25 percent capacity in the third phase at half capacity. The governor's phase reopening plan allows counties to request permission from state health officials to advance to more reopened stages, according to public health metrics around the virus. So we've got the full list of changes that he has proposed on our website, ifiber one newsradio.com. Some of the additional ones, though, we're looking at libraries will al- align with regulations for museums and then could allow for some indoor activity in phase two at 25 percent capacity. Of course, Mason County is in phase three right now. Uh, wedding receptions increase the total number of wedding reception attendees to 50 in phase three. For real estate, guidelines will allow for open houses, but limit attendance by the county's gathering size in accordance to their phase. And some guidelines will provide information and protocols for outdoor recreation and races and bike tours, even as we get ready for skiing and kayaking. Not going to be doing much of that in the winter, but, you know, things like that now more than 12 participants. So we're starting to increase those numbers a little bit. But again, please uh, do what you can to help reduce the spread, distance, masks, um, hand sanitizer, all that stuff. And one thing still uh, that I'm trying to figure out, I'm wondering if you ever put two and two together and figure this one out. And I get asked this all the time from people, and I don't really have an answer is, why do they allow 10,000 people in a Walmart, but only 50 at a wedding? It's like it's a once in a lifetime thing. Your daughter's getting married, your son's getting married, and you have to tell people they can't attend a wedding, but there's no limit. Walmart, Target, they don't say, okay, we've reached 50 people in here. We got to wait for you know people to leave before people go in. Do you have an answer for that? Because I well, wish I, I could had answer to wait that for once. people. But. I don't, but I've had to wait at Walmart. It just seems like you could have a thousand people breathing on each other in line at Walmart, but it just seems weird that weddings are still limited. 
but um, I think maybe because just the traditional everybody's sitting right next to each other in the in the um, rows and and the wedding planners and parties. I mean, at least at Walmart, if you see somebody in an aisle, you can go to a different aisle. Yeah, that's probably. I mean, that's why you don't ever see me at Walmart because I see you and scooch away before <laughs> we make we make eye contact. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Fewer children are getting scheduled vaccinations for diseases such as measles in the state since the coronavirus pandemic began. The Seattle Times reports the number of children 18 and younger being vaccinated in Washington dropped by 31 percent in August compared to the August average from 2015 to 2019. The downward trend began in February, then fell sharply in March with a 33 percent drop compared to the March average from 2015 to 2019 and bottomed out with a 39 percent drop in April. Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Washington School of Medicine, Dr. Beth Ebel, says childhood vaccines are highly effective and safe, and parents need to keep their children on track with immunizations. Well, Governor Inslee is seeking a third term in the election upcoming in November. His challenger is uh, Police Chief Lauren Culp, Republican from Republic. In addition to that, tonight will be the only debate between the governor and his challenger. It's going to be on TVW and I think on some of the major networks channels as well. Before that, we will have the vice presidential debate on the radio from Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, That will be on the air with a pregame show at five and then debate analysis just after its conclusion. If the second and third presidential debates happen, and I think uh, Vice President Biden has suggested that if President Trump is still positive with COVID, that the second debate on the 15th should not happen. But we'll see what happens there. Of course, we'll have it for you here on the radio. And also heard that it may be an outdoor venue, too, if they do have it at all. So that should be interesting. It's probably not a bad idea to have it outside somewhere. Uh, we've well, got, you know, that's a good point, because yeah. they just had uh, Vice President Biden has just I saw that he did one. It was like almost like a drive in movie theater town hall. And then he just was on TV the other day, I think, down in Florida in an open air setting for a tent. When, where is this one supposed to be? I mean, it's supposed to be in Miami. So right. in October 5th, they may be able to get away with an open air venue on that one. It's the town hall one, too. And I'm very interested to watch that. Yeah, should be interesting stuff. Thurston, listen, listen to that, I should say, on the radio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thurston County Public Health and Social Services has released the full Thurston County 2020 point in time homeless census report. The report details the results of the January 23rd, 2020 PIT homeless census, a countywide effort to learn who is homeless and why. This year, the PIT found 995 people experiencing homelessness, 159 were in transitional housing, and 295 were in emergency shelters. More than half, or 541, were unsheltered or homeless. This represents a 35% or a 147% increase since 2019. Kansas City Chiefs, Seahawks, Green Bay Packers, Buffalo Bills. Top four teams in the latest AP Pro 32 poll. Same as last week. All four teams are 4-0. and oh. Seahawks play the Vikings this weekend for Sunday night football. Pre-game at 3, kickoff at 5-20. Seahawks are presented by Shelton Health and Rehab, Riviera Shellfish, South Sound Appliance, Dogtown Grooming, Neal's Pharmacy, and the Shelton Athletic Club. Again today on the show, Port of Call with Dick Taylor and Wendy Smith and Peninsula Credit Union on the air talking about a big grant they received to help look at the affordable housing situation in Mason County. That and more all coming up here on Daybreak. Good morning. From the iFiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes here on the Daybreak Show as we get ready to find out what's going on with the Port of Shelton during today's Port of Call. Dick Taylor and Wendy Smith, hello. Good morning. Hello. We're getting ready for 2021, so I know there's budget talks, but first let's uh, look back at a little bit of the year. The runway project's all done. Yep, it is. finished. Tell officially, it yeah. Okay. So it completed officially a month ago, um, but they had to come back and do the last of the painting. And so they came back last Friday, as you know, it was gorgeous weather, uh-huh. and perfect. Um, so they came back out and just closed it down for the one day and 
now we're good to go. That's so, great. Yeah, That's it's right. really great. Super, super project. And yeah, it's been a long, long time. time. Yeah. It has been a long time, just because, as you know, last year we kind of got delayed, and so it's kind of drug out longer than we anticipated. But it was a good project, really yeah. good. Um, engineering firm's great. The contractors were all just right on top of things and really good to work with, and it provided a lot of jobs. Sure. So yeah. it's excellent. So now this... Uh, is going to be good at the runways for another 30 years? Or? Should be. I mean, yeah. they say, I think they say 20 to 25. Okay. Um, so it should be quite a span. Of course, it depends on usage, too. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. if we get a huge traffic increase, but as, as far as we know, it's going to go another 25, 30 Great. years. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, as we looked ahead to uh, next year, I know the budget conversations are already having. What kind of impact have you guys uh, noticed? from the lack of events up at Port Property this year. Well, yeah, and we just passed what would have been Oyster Fest yeah. weekend, which was kind of, you know, it's it's just so, yeah, yeah, it is a sad feeling. Um, as far as impact, we really haven't. Our smaller car club groups have been able to, you know, once things opened to phase three, they were able to conduct business as normal. Um, we filled some of the gaps with some further um, clubs that wanted in. So, Besides just, I'd say, the bigger, um, you know, when you don't have an event like Oyster Fest, it doesn't r impact us greatly because we're not officially, you know, there doing any kind of business. We're just offering the site. But it is different. Um, and so much so that we have been conducting a fall meeting of user groups every year. And um, the staff and I have been just been talking about, what do we do this year? Do we do a meeting? Do we do a Zoom? Do, right. we, do we even have one? Um, and, and mainly the reason is because most of the returning groups, they, they have their weekends picked. They like the first weekend in August or the, you know. And so I just said, since we're kind of still up in the air and we still have a limitation of 10 um, to be able to, you know, conduct Our a meeting, meeting yeah. socially distanced, of course. Um, let's just not do it. Let's just send out, you know, are you still okay with the you know, first weekend in August uh -huh. or whatever it is and, and just see how it goes. But um, but it has, it definitely has been different. Um, so with that, we're not adjusting rates. You know, rates are staying the same because um, the user groups pay us a fee for per day. Um, so we're just leaving that. Same with um, hangar rates. They're okay. staying the same this, this next year and that's part of the budget. Mm -hmm. um, we just thought that was fair. Um, we adjusted last year and, and it just made sense to kind of leave things the same, so. What else are the yeah. commissioners looking at for budgets this year or, or look aheads to next year? Well, we've got a, we're looking at uh, capital uh, projects. Uh, one of them's a 40,000 square foot building, which uh, we will build and they will come. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I've, actually, there are people lined up to come into it already that want to be in a, a building like that already. That size so, building? I know you guys yeah. have done 5,000 well, square foot. This would, it would be broken up. Okay. Or it yeah. could be. Or it could, could be. be. So, yeah. so it could be large, or it could be half, or it could be quarters. Quarters, or. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. It's yeah. Exciting. Oh, Where's, yeah. Where's that going to be at? Up behind uh, Sims Vibration. Okay. That area. And then any further development out Johns Prairie next year, maybe? or. We're, we do have a, a building currently out there that was um, part of an old mill um, structure, so it's um, it's a warehouse type building, but it's only part walled, as you've seen a lot of those buildings were. Um, and so our own crew, forced labor, will probably um, sheet that in maybe this winter, and so that's kind of on the list as, as well. Um, there's a little office building that could be used as training or an office it has a bathroom it has a little room and it was used in the past as kind of like a little school building you uh -huh. know for trainings that kind of thing so that's all usable property we're going to start there um, we do have some talk among um, current tenants of some future expansion possibly out there so nothing on our schedule at this point to um, plan building a large building but again we get the Sanderson Field, that was on our, that was really on our agenda for this year. And with COVID, we just, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, nor, not to mention, it yeah. was really hard to get appointments and do any engineering or permits or. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. So we're kind of backed everything up, but yeah, I think we'll concentrate on this this year and then, you know, roll it over next year. So. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Dick Taylor and Wendy Smith from the Port of Shelton always got good news to share with uh, the folks, not only in the Port District, but all throughout the county. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're listening to Daybreak on iFiber One News Radio.
Well, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slicky and Spencer Hughes on the Daybreak Show, and we have some great guests on today to talk via Zoom video conference from Peninsula Credit Union CEO Jim Morrell and VP of Lending Chris Kirkley. Chris, how you doing? Jim, how are you? We are doing terrific. Yep, very excited. It's great to have you. First off, happy birthday to Peninsula, right? Eighty-five. Eighty-five years. Yep, we've been. Uh, working with members of this community for uh, since the thirties and uh, helping amazing. the community grow uh, that entire time. So, and now, now I know Jim, you, you've been with Peninsula now, I'm going to say, go back in my memory banks, 11 years now. Uh, it seems like that at times, but actually it's only been about eight and a half. So, okay. Uh, but it's been a uh, a lot going on during that time. It has been a lot. And I know Peninsula is is huge in the community and does a lot. We all gathered together, strange enough to say, but in January of 2019 at the Alderbrook for some housing conversations. And, and the need was identified there that there is a lot of housing needs in Mason County and in all of Washington, all across the country, as we've seen these uh, uh, problems with COVID virus now. And this seems to be something that you really took a hold of and went for it. And now you're seeing some of the fruits of this labor as you guys have just been awarded a massive grant to help out folks in this space. Is that right? That's that's right, Jeff. So in 2018, one of the things that we were beginning to realize uh, was that the workforce in Mason County was having a really difficult time trying to find any affordable place to live. And so that came together in January of 2019 with a countywide conversation just on this topic because it it hadn't been happening before. And it was really exciting to see uh, both of our chambers, the EDC, uh, Mason County government, uh, the city of Shelton, a whole lot of private uh, businesses and entities, large businesses um, saying, yeah, this is really important that we have a place for our employees, our workforce to live. And so that was sort of the impetus uh, behind uh, getting this going. We did that with the help of the Northwest Credit Union Foundation um, to to put on that event. And then fast forward um, to today or last the end of last month, uh, we were notified by the Community Development Financial Institution Fund or CDFI fund, uh, which is a part of the U.S. Treasury, that we won a nine hundred thousand dollar grant to help with this work and to help uh, continue to revitalize uh, our lower income uh, community in, in Mason County. Chris, let's bring you in out of the conversation and talk about what you as the VP of lending are looking at when you see this. You got the email from Jim that the the, the grant came through and he said, this is awesome. We're going to be able to help so many people in our community. But how is this money going to be able to help? Well, first, we'll take a step back and see what, you know, further work with our community partners to see really what the needs are. Um, we don't, we don't have to, um, we want to make sure whatever we're creating or building supports the community, not, uh, creating something just to create it. We want to be fulfilling a need. Um, so we do have some ideas. I don't want to spill the beans yet, but, uh, do have some pretty good ideas. Of, and then what we want to do is, um, either through consultation with others, uh, community, find out peel back the continue to peel back the onion a little bit more so we find out really what some needs are that we can really put those funds to use you know that makes a lot of sense as i think about your position what people do when they come and they go to peninsula credit union and and start the process and applications for loans and things like that you very well could make a huge splash in the pan and say Peninsula Credit Union, yada, 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 excited, 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 $900,000. But just like that, it could be gone. And and when you talk about lending and you talk about long-term, I mean, 30-year mortgages, you know, five, eight-year car loans, you, you really have to think long-term when you're gaming this out. So people on day one are going to be able to realize that success at the end of uh, whatever journey they go on with Peninsula. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to, you know, towards the creating workforce housing opportunities um, through either down payment assistance, but we do have a program in place now for that. Maybe building on down payment assistance programs, getting members of the community, not just members of Peninsula, but uh, getting them into affordable housing. 
Um, that is the, the big push behind this grant. Jim, talk to me a little bit about, I see in your press release, Congressman Heck in the six, which represents Shelton and a um, large portion of the part of the peninsula area. He seems that he was excited about this uh, and the relationship with him when it comes to these housing issues, it, it seems to be there. It, it absolutely is. Um, Congressman Heck uh, has been one of the leaders uh, back in Washington, D.C. for identifying really this national crisis that we have of being 7 million uh, housing units short across the country uh, for affordable housing. And um, so we've we've really built a strong relationship with the congressman uh, to help under, us understand that issue better and then to translate it here locally to Mason County as well. So, you know, without getting too um, geeky on the numbers, what we're really talking about uh, as far as income levels, are people making anywhere between forty to ninety-three thousand dollars a year in their household, and affordability, so that somebody's not uh, cost burdened in their housing, as HUD defines it, is that that household is spending thirty percent or less. So that's roughly a thousand to twenty-three hundred dollars a month for mortgage or rent payments, utilities, property taxes if you own a home. And that's really difficult to do. So if we can work more closely with the city of Shelton, with Mason County, as they develop their uh, development codes, as they say reconsider that uh, with some of the other partners that have, you know, construction trades and so forth to understand how is it that we can, can increase the housing availability in our community, that will help us try and achieve our goal of, of having more people that work here, live here. Um, it's so that that's ultimately what we're after, and, and hopefully, kind of puts it in context. You're talking about a thousand to twenty three hundred dollars a month uh, for housing expenses. So when when we gathered back in January and we we're talking about the needs, and you're you're talking about the national needs, I can only imagine since COVID, the the needs have gotten worse, or has some of that been held off? I mean, are we not seeing a lot of the um, the the tenants having to be evicted and things like that. I I mean I feel like the governor had done some things and then even uh, President Trump had had put in some national moratoriums on evictions and things like that. Do you think that's going to come around later in the next few years and really kind of have a major impact, or are we gonna is, are we gonna be able to push through this a little bit? I, I fear Jeff that that we might see that sooner than later because those moratoriums I think expire even are set to expire here in the next few weeks, and so we have may have a, a considerable eviction issue uh, on our hands. Hopefully those those uh, get extended at the state and the federal level. Hopefully Congress and the administration can come together on some type of relief. Um, it was not promising the the news I just heard at noon today, but. Um, or, or so, but Chris could talk a little bit about what we're seeing in the in the overall housing market because there are a lot of there's a lot of activity going on both refinance and purchase activity which drives prices up in our community in large part because people are moving out of the urban areas wanting to live here. Yeah, Chris, I talked to a ton of realtors and they say the median house prices in in Shelton Mason County, I mean they're hundreds of thousands of dollars and that takes most everybody out of the equation on those numbers we were just talking about. It, it, exactly. It really does. The, the median price has gone up and then you also impact that with historically low mortgage rates, which is allowing more buying power, for some, which is also driving up some of the valuations and some of the loans. So that's kind of a triple effect between both of those. Um, so, but Refi business has been really booming. Um, you know, as I mentioned, the rates being historically low. There's talk of there being an increase come December first of at least a half point, which may slow that refinance business. But even uh, homes on the markets, I mean, some realtors that are more in the trenches could probably speak more to the real numbers. But it's my understanding the inventory itself is really, really low. Yeah, and yeah. Do get on on the market, turn really quickly. It seems like just I mean individual housing now the land the the lots of land are going fast too. Jim, is there a number out there that would um, 
level uh, level this. So you said nationally, there's a, there's a huge housing shortage. If tomorrow magically that number was filled, would we would we would everything kind of go okay? Would the number would the market start to level out a little bit more, or would that just add on to this uh, a whole nother problem? Well. Uh, I, you know, as with my economic background, Jeff, you know, I think certainly as Chris was pointing out, if if we magically tomorrow had seven million additional units um, available, it, supply and demand would push down prices, right? Um, and that would that would help. Um, I think part of what can help too is helping people, particularly um, individuals in today's environment with the, the COVID economic impact from COVID impacting their household budgets. Um, the more we can help them un, uh, budget their, their funds, the more that we can help them refinance, as Chris was talking about, not only uh, real estate uh, types of loans, but any other type of debt that they might be carrying, um, then we help lessen the expenses. One of the challenges we have had historically here in Mason County, and I think the latest numbers that I have from the United Way um, Alice program, the asset limited income constrained and employed program that they run that we also talked about at that summit in January of 2019, is that 52% of our households in Mason County are at or below a household survival budget, meaning that they're making just enough money in order to pay for their monthly expenses, housing being the largest, if not the largest component of that, but everything else that they need to pay for as well, transportation, healthcare, um, you name it, food. Uh, so um, we're trying to assist people uh, in improving their financial lives by providing them education and more understanding of what steps they can take in order to do that by bringing tools, products, and services to the table that help uh, uh, help support them in um, down payment assistance programs, which Chris mentioned that we already have today, and then increasing uh, in creative ways um, the housing uh, availability. Um, so if we're able to finance a home, as an example, as a for instance, uh, on a property where that owner could also uh, build an ADU or a prefabbed home, rent that out to a permanent resident of Mason County, not turn it into a VRBO, but rent it out. That income can then help further uh, add to the household uh, revenue or income and um, help offset the mortgage expense, right? So uh, we have to be creative. And when people can't make that, we have to be there for them to help uh, prepare them uh, to uh, assume a mortgage when, when they're ready and when we can approve them. I know that you guys do work hard uh, in all c parts of the community to mention some of those things like you were talking about. There's a lot as well on the Peninsula's website at pcfcu.org. Again, branches are temporarily closed. Uh, drive through appointment only because of COVID. Uh, always check with your local branch, of course, when it comes to that. You can find them on Facebook as well. And um, there'll be more information coming out uh, over the next couple of months on how you possibly could receive some help based off this major grant that uh, Peninsula was able to work hard and receive. Chris, good to see you. Jim, it's always good to see you. I know the team over there well, is a uh, great Jen and Kirk and everybody at Peninsula is always, always there to help uh, with folks. And I'm glad to see y'all are safe and healthy and we'll check in before too long. Great. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks to all our members too, and their patients during this COVID time too. Just if you do need to come in and see us, don't hesitate to give us a call and, and uh, we'll be more than happy to make an appointment and see you in person or through the drive through or, other means. Sounds good. Thank you so much for listening to today's Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. Again, I'm so happy and honored you found us and chose to listen. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of some of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio KMAS weekdays from 6 to 9. Thank you so much again and talk with you next time.